Martin. Martin. It's episode 34. Martin. Put your willy in there, mate. So, hi everyone. Welcome to episode you 34. It. You love it. You fucking love it. You, you, Can you I know there's something inside you that wants to do it. Fucking true story, point. right? Fucking true story. You will piss yourself. You will fucking won't believe it. When I was a kid at school, I was probably 17, 16. And computers were new in, in, in the in public life. So, you know, they've been in, in the military and stuff for a long time and since the war. But in, in terms of everyday life, you just didn't have computers. Um, and we had this, we had these people come into our school to test out this new funky software, which would match your your you do a questionnaire, it would match you with the perfect job. It's the kind of thing you get on fucking Facebook now, you know. But this was a big deal. So I, I filled in this fucking form, this this thing. I can't remember how I did it even. But you know what it came back as? As my ideal, on my ideal job. Bearing in mind, I'm autistic and don't like people. Therapist. Oh, much worse. Much, much worse. That it was... Know. Airline attendant. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Airline fucking attendant. I can't imagine anything. Can you imagine me at the front of the cabin going, there are doors at each side of the access, two left, two right. Imagine me with an awkward fucking passenger. Oh, my God. Starts gobbing off at me. I'd fucking smash a, I'd smash a bottle in his face, you know? Oh, I just fucking laughed and said, this is bollocks. That is I bollocks. couldn't contain my mirth. Uh, I know. Airline that's, fucking attendant. That's hilarious. That That's fucking True the story, that is. That's 40 years ago, that is. But I, I, I'll tell hell. you what we should do. is uh, there's. I, I took it a while ago. I can't remember what um, job it told me I should do. But there's a relatively new one from the government. Um, in lieu of the inevitable fucking redundancies and whatnot that are coming that people are ignorant to at the moment. Um, they've released a new scheme, like back to work and new job schemes and yada, yada, yada. And uh, they, they're reusing this tool that they released last year, I believe. Me and you should both take it and reveal our results uh, on yeah. the next podcast. I'll look for it. If you send me the link, I don't fucking care. Yeah, it'll be fucking hilarious. But here's the thing, you see. Even if it shows me up to be a complete idiot, I don't really mind because I think too many people, they won't laugh at themselves. Yeah. You know? And if you can't laugh at yourself, you've got no fucking business laughing at anyone else. Yeah. Uh, uh, it'll be fucking funny. It'll be fucking yeah. funny to see what it says we're good at and what we should be doing. I'm going to message yeah. Holly Oh, right man. Now. What if it comes back as fucking airline attendant again? <laughs> <laughs> And it's just what the same one out? from all what of have those years. All, what have I been missing all these years? Just imagine me in my fucking little Ryanair uniform, my little blue skirt and high heels, can't you? Oh, I can. I can. I can imagine yeah. you on your knees in the cockpit servicing the cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your mic Looking on the fucking captain's joystick. Maybe they took that into consideration by having you on board. There'd be less oh, dual consumption. Fuck, yeah. and- even though you won't be able to help them with their bags into the overhead head storage. Well, well, that's another thing. I mean, well, mind you, short, short birds manage it, I don't know, short chicks manage it, so I'm sure I could do it. But I can't imagine, I mean, I, I, I struggle to think of a worse job for me than airline steward. I'm struggling. Um, a therapist it wouldn't, be, but wouldn't be as bad because you're in a, a kind of a position of authority where you're in a mentor, yeah. like a mentoring role. I could manage that. Yeah. But it's the worst kind of customer. Maybe, maybe other kinds of re, well, maybe a kind of retail would be for pretty fucking bad. bad. No, I, yeah. I reckon that genuinely is the worst job because I when can't I was imagine thinking, one. well, my mind went straight to a waiter. Like you, you, you'd fucking that'd be awful for you. But then I thought, well, you're a waiter in the sky. Yeah, you were a waiter in the sky, and you're in this and fucking tr- little tube, and you can't yeah, get away from people. And, yeah. and people are generally more fractious than they are in fucking restaurants and things. Yeah. I, yeah, I can't think of a worse job. No, I can't. I'm, I, I'm, I'm really struggling. And I've, had, I've had 40 fucking years to think about this. <laughs> I, yeah, I can't think of a worse job. Oh, a bit high, 
th- this is almost like a challenge now. It is, isn't it? My- maybe we should fucking post it as a challenge. The worst fucking possible job for the EBG. Yeah, what is even the worst job that EBG could have? Yeah, I'm I'm struggling to to think of anything other than air host. Yeah, I, is that just, what they called? They used to call them um, stewards and stewardesses. No, oh, that's it. Yeah, uh, yeah. embarrassing other years, but anyway. But yeah, that that was uh, that was the highlight of my fucking time at school. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. So anyway, you were saying our mate Drew reckons he's got friends who said our podcast is fucking excellent. Yeah. He's not fucking wrong. I don't think he is. I don't. And, uh, Other people say it to me. You know, they love it. They love it. It's the, one guy said it's just like two two blokes just having a chat down the pub, but you're talking about business and it all makes sense. Fucking hell, not surprising, is it? Because we fucking know what we're talking about. <laughs> and we're, we're, we're both, you know, a bit rough, aren't we? You speak for yourself. I'm as smooth as fucking silk. I am, mate. Right? Oh my god! Just, just for the listeners, yeah, I am going to address the ris- listeners right now. John is in a neon yellow slazinger, fucking slazinger wife beater, with Throw his fucking muscles. tattoos out on his left arm. Yeah, he's fucking got his piercings in his ears. Now he's showing me his nipple piercing. The video people will see this, and he's going, <laughs> "You speak for yourself." <laughs> You, honestly, you you remind me of when I lived in Slough currently. Oh no, yeah, yeah. I'll look, all I'll you all, all you are missing is a bulldog here on your on your on your right arm, and uh, I, the great British flags and the pride of Britain in right. I right am you, fully aware you. of what people often think when they see me, and it, it's obvious in their behaviour. They they underestimate me, knowing. Yeah. And it's yeah, great. Yeah. I'd rather be underestimated than overestimated. Oh, for sure. It's far far better to be surprising than disappointing. Yeah, I look like a fucking thug. That's why I, t- I said on a previous episode, you know, go to the chip shop up the way there towards Ross Carberry, and the young bloods in their cars, they they vie to get my attention, my knowledge as I walk past, and they're all they're not bigger built than I am, but they're certainly taller than I am. But they, I look, oh, oh mate, oh. I just don't have main sometimes Dane to give him a nod, you know. <laughs> Dane's give him a nod. Anyway, there's a fucking lesson there. To all you Canton listeners, we don't really address you. Yeah. People are starting to spread the word. So if you ain't fucking told someone about this podcast, quite you're frankly, in my eyes, you're a prick. Yeah. In cunt. the words of Peter Crouch, don't ask John. Yeah, but the listeners will know who it is. Pass the fucking pod. Pass the pod. Who's Peter Crouch? Uh, Ex England striker with an incredible oh, right. podcast. It, it, if you enjoy football, it's it probably oh, the best, best thing you'll ever listen to. It's an incredible podcast. Well, I'll get up early in the morning to listen to that, shall I? <laughs> well, he, well, he says pass the pod, so I'm going to steal that from him and I'm going to tell our fucking. What does it even fucking mean? Pass the podcast along to a friend. Oh, sure, that's it. Right. Pass the pod, which right. is a lot more catchy than pass the podcast along to a friend. I suppose. I'm not really down with the kids, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, well, in literal sense, you are. You're about their height. Like my younger brother's taller than you, and he's 12. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I, I, when I dress up as a schoolgirl, you never know the difference, mate. Well, I, have we had this conversation on the podcast, or was this in private when we're meant to be doing business things? Probably both. I don't know. Who cares? Probably. Yeah. The, Mine and John's private executive business meetings last for all of three minutes usually, and then we just descend into madness. A bit like sex, really, isn't it? <laughs> mm. Well, then, well, you speak for yourself. I descend into, you know, a, a hot mess of tears. Oh, I can't believe I came. <laughs> oh, the, the thing about sex, right, with women, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm saying this it's, it's from a bright point of view. Just before you shoot your load, you would you do anything for them and you you fucking mean it. Yeah, yeah, you do. You do, you you genuinely and the moment, the moment you shot your bolt, you just think, oh I wish you'd fuck off, leave me alone now. Yeah, it's <laughs> like you immediately fucking just take an inch back. And I think girls must think it must be the force pushing you back from yeah. you come at 30 miles an hour, didn't you? But no, it's, it's really it's just like, oh, get away from me. I'm done. It's I'm done. <laughs> Can I have a cuddle? Yeah, I can have a Oh, I love it. We could lie here and talk for a bit. No, we can't. Fuck off. <laughs> I've just shot my load. I want to be left alone. <laughs> so, any, any women listening to this who get pissed off with their men, 
you're doing this and you think that he's the only one and it's something about you. I promise you it isn't. It's something about all of us men, I reckon. Um, I'm sure there's the odd man who will deny it, but he's lying. Um, or he's just a better actor than we are. Hey, yeah, it's done, fucking You've done your job. You want to get back to sharpening your knives and making marketing funnels and... Is <laughs> <laughs> that what you call it these days? <laughs> And, and, and anyway, most women fucking moan that men aren't good enough in bed, so you should be grateful that they're going away so you can get in the shower and get the old shower head off. Babe, babe none, none of the birds I've been with have ever complained about that. That's why I said most men, John, yeah? I mean, obviously you're still a young lad and you're still finding your feet, but I mean, you get an old stud like me. I've been having sex since I was fucking 14, mate, yeah? I've got 10 years' experience under my belt now. I, I like to think I'm, I'm half decent. You like to think you're old. <laughs> no one's ever told you that, but you like to think you are. All right. Oh, I, I don't like to brag. My oh, your fucking dad you told me you weren't. What, any good? Yeah. Well, he's got this weird thing where he likes toes up his bum and I just I couldn't fit my toe up there. Oh, him too, eh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think we better change the subject before we get a bit rude. Oh, yeah, we could descend <laughs> into a pit of madness, couldn't we? Well, it's a the last one. I mean, you're listening to this on a Monday, um, dear listener, but we're recording this late on a Friday afternoon and we're knackered. We've had a busy <laughs> week. We've got some epic shit coming along, but maybe we'll mention it later, maybe we won't. Mm. So, Today, <clears throat> we're going to leave the sales stuff behind. It's one of the three easy ways to boost the sales. Because um, when it when it comes to selling, we've talked about this before, when it comes to selling, people are really fucking wimpy. And they, they get all... All tight asked about it, you know, and embarrassed. <clears throat> and uh, the first thing, the easiest way, and this is to get higher fees, or it's all tied in with the higher price stuff you're going to leave behind for now. Um, next week, we'll be able to, or later in the week, we'll be on a, a different topic for a while. But the first thing is be more focused. And most people are, you look at people's landing pages, we have mentioned this before, you look at people's landing pages or their business. Um, classic one is a solicitor. So a random solicitor, look at the yellow pages, if you remember the yellow pages or whatever their ads are these days. And I'll say specialists in with a fucking long line, long list of different things. And you think, oh, there must be a really big practice with 200 people in it. And there's like three blokes in his fucking geriatric Alsatian. You know, you cannot be a specialist in all those things. I mean, maybe 2000 years ago, we had polymaths like Pythagoras and, and Aristotle and... Um, what's his name, Da Vinci, more recently. But these days, in, in things like law and anything like that, you cannot be a specialist in many, many different things. Maybe there's one or two in the world who are, but most of us are not polymaths. We can be specialists in one or two things, maybe one. So I suggest people get more focused when they're, when they're um, trying to sell things. And by that, I mean, you know, we, we talk about this in what we've, got, what we've got recently called the Business Accelerator. And... It's predicated on figuring out who you talk, who exactly you want to sell to, what problem you're selling, and exactly how you fix it. Um, Tacky Moore does something he calls the five ones, and three of those five ones are pick one thing, one solution, you know, one problem, one solution, and one target market, and do that for one year. I can't remember what the fifth one is, um, but that's one, that's, uh, one conversion tool. I think one conversion tool, right? Ones. Yeah. Five, the five ones. And, you know, people do that and they, they get great results. It, it's Most people are just farting around. They're just trying to sell anything they possibly can that comes along. And the opportunity comes along to make a sale, even if it's not within their remit, particularly or their area, they'll do it. And it sound, it's, it's great in some ways because, yeah, you think I'm getting some cash flow here, but really it's taking you away from your core message and your core business. For anyone listening to this who wants to get a, a much deeper understanding of what I'm talking about, read a book called Built to Sell by John Warrillow. W-A-R-R-I-L-O-W. I'm guessing everyone here can spell John with an H. You can't. You probably shouldn't be allowed near a computer on your own. So same thing is in your, um, in your, your sales process, ask more questions. Because what I've noticed about a lot of salespeople um, and I'm thinking of one particular bunch of people in particular who I recently sent the most stinking fucking email to because they wouldn't take no for an answer. Um, you have this idea that you can fix the problem. So you don't ask any questions. You just go straight ahead trying to sell your shit. 
And that puts people off because it seems like high pressure. But also often you're just not talking their language. You're, you're talking about doing something they don't actually fucking want doing. It's great if you're fucking happy. You know, if you, you, you see, if you've got a hammer and you see every problem as a nail and your client actually sees the problem as, say, a screw and you're going, oh, I can knock your screw in. Yeah, but I don't want, I don't want you to, I don't want you to knock the screw in. I want to screw the screw in, you know? If, if you're not asking questions, you don't understand what's going on. You don't know what to, what to sell them. You don't, even, you don't even know if you can help them often. And that, that's, that's probably one of the worst things, isn't it? I remember the, a guy near us used to sell um, bike bones, it was, in Leicester. I'm going back at least 40 years or more. And he would not sell the wrong bike to a child or the, the child's parent. He would not sell the wrong bike. You know, he would measure you up and he would talk to you. And if it wasn't, if he hadn't got the right bike and he couldn't match the bike to the child, he would not sell a bike. And that's fucking huge. Mm. That's huge. He Honorable. would not sell the wrong bike. But it is honourable and everyone should be doing it. I mean, we do. At the times we've turned people away, we, you, we can only do that or anyone can only do that if you, you know, you can only do it if you ask questions because if you don't ask questions, you don't have enough knowledge. The other yeah. thing it does as well, and this might not be obvious, is it positions you too. Because again, most, most people are expecting someone in a sales role to be going gung-ho to make the sale. You know, always pushing forward. We can help you, we can do this, we can do that. If you, if you will take a deep breath and relax a little bit and say, well, hang on. I mean, the classic case was when the, one of the guys, um, oh, a couple of three years ago, is it two or three years ago now? I can't remember now. Um, no, it was two and a half years ago, he messaged me <clears throat> and he said he wanted to, to start working together and stuff. And he wanted to jump straight in. Um, and I just said to him, oh, hang on a minute, I don't know anything about you yet. I don't even know if I can help you or if I want to. And I asked him loads of questions. And the, the more I declined to get into the how much and what I can do for you, the more eager he became. And so by the end of it, it was just a fade to complain. He wanted to work with me and that was it. And he was just, it was falling over himself to answer my questions because he wanted in yeah and the more i just said well, i'm not i'm not sure though I'm, I, I need to know a little bit more he was fucking frantic well that's yeah. it, it's it's counterintuitive but anyone who's, who's played the dating game at all knows this knows this is true treat it's almost like treating me to keep them keen the best way to a frustrated woman is to tell her you're not interested <laughs> we we have a client now who um approached us and we said look we yes. went through the rigmarole and whatnot and we said we can't take you on um in good nature without recommending you check these guys out first because they specialize we, in this area yeah we highly we highly recommend you go with them ultimately the choice lies with you but you're not joining us until you've at the very least spent some time reviewing their material and um, two days later, came back and said, you know, thanks for that, but I'd still like to go with you guys. We, we thought you know, he's gone. You know, we've done the right thing. We didn't even think twice about it, but, you know, he's probably going to be better served over there. But he came back and he said, no, nah, for what I want, I want to work with you guys. One of the reasons he wanted to work with us because of our, it was because we were upfront and honest about it, saying these guys we're talking about specialise in this area. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the fact yeah. they actually, they're, the fact they're actually my clients as well, <laughs> <laughs> so anything they teach and they learn pretty much anything they, they would teach and they learn from me in the first place <laughs> well, that's not the point he did i don't think he knew that so it was moot really but yeah ask, ask more questions don't be so fucking keen to to give answers that you've you don't actually you can't possibly know yet and the third thing is and this is a really unusual one um and it's the reason for asking questions and being focused that is show understanding now, I don't mean being understanding as in like a loving father. I mean, understand their problem. I've said it before. If you, if you can show someone you understand where they are in, in the world, understand their problem. If you can meet them in the conversation they're having in their head, essentially, they will also assume you know how to solve the problem. If you understand the problem, they'll assume you know how to solve it. No, it's not always true, obviously. Um, but if, if you, you know, it's, it's about trust. Mm-hmm. And one of the things oh, yeah. that we, we know when we spent a lot of time on this was actually getting into contractors and, and tradesmen's heads about well, what, what challenges are they facing? It's all about that they're working hard, they're not making enough money, they're attracting the wrong clients. 
and they're in a cycle they can't break out of because you can't break out of a cycle a cycle has to be broken from the outside for the most part yeah that's why we kind of why we've got a business yeah. um i had an email the other day from a guy you know him i'll, I'll talk to you about it later but um he, he sent me this long heartfelt email and looking in from the outside it's obvious what his problem is he's just taking on all the work he can get he's not He's not focused. He's not asking any questions. He's just taking it because it's there. Yeah. And he's he doesn't. He says, "I've got this feeling. I'm too busy, and I'm getting in my own way." But I'm in it. I can't see that from the inside. Well, of course you can't. But we can. Yeah. No, it's the kind of if he was in a hot seat, it's the kind of thing that would take me five minutes to fix his fucking business and send him on his way. God, I miss the fucking events. Yeah, I do as well. The live ones. <laughs> Bit, God, I it's strange coming from an autistic odd fart like me, but it's true. Yeah. Well, we have a laugh as well, me and, me and you actually get to sit down and just have a pint, do this, but in person, basically. It's snogged behind the fucking pillar. Don't tell people. That's, the, that's one of the upsells at the events. Come watch me and John <laughs> fuck. We do have to be careful. We do have to be careful. We emit very gay vibes. Very gay vibes. And there's... Oh, yeah, <laughs> we just got to be careful. <laughs> why? Why? Why do you give a shit? I don't give a shit. <laughs> People, I just don't <laughs> want to end up in the wrong room again, John. Fucking <laughs> business partners, but it's actually partners in business. I know someone I was talking to a little while back, and I said, without going into too much detail, he could do some real damage to his. I mean, he could do some real, real fucking cool marketing. On, on Grinder, if you wanted to, yeah, as a PT. Yeah, yeah. And he, he could really fucking clean up there, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things he said about, one of his objections was that people, my mates might say and think I'm gay. <sighs> so what? <sighs> you know, I, I know you're not selling. gay, <laughs> honest. <laughs> yeah, wink, wink. No, I won't no. tell anyone. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, any any PT, if you wanted to, could make a fuck ton of money on, on Grinder. Yeah. By setting your profile out and you know be overt about it and, and say mm. if you wanted to get a body like mine because you know gay guys it's just like a stereotype you know they're like a buff young man just fucking hit me out and we'll we'll do some business no not fucking buttonness <laughs> business you would have, you would have to deal with looking at about ten cocks a day if uh, the reports I hear about Grinder are true oh they are my my son temporarily had an account. And he, he <laughs> got it for himself for his 18th birthday. And then he, <laughs> he cancelled it because he says that I'll get too many photos, Dad. And I fucking <laughs> myself laughing. And then well, you I knew, went, it, was gonna, I knew it was going to happen, but he had to find out himself, you know. Yeah. What's the password, son? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he, those cocks look like mine, Dad. So he did, Dad. <laughs> Any of doing a Heston Blumenthal? Any other culture remind you of your childhood? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. What, what he doesn't realise is they were all me with spoof accounts sending pictures of my cock. <laughs> Just slightly editing the cock. This time I fancy an extra. <laughs> Changing the colour and making it twice the size. <laughs> yeah. For this one, I fancy a bit shorter, but a lot of girth. A coke can. I want a oh. coke can. <laughs> How can I? So anyway. Oh. That's 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 an easy way to boost your sales. Be more focused about what you're doing. Be, be more cognizant about what your process is. Ask more questions. Get more info, and then show show you understand what's going on. And you, you know the, the second one certainly feeds into the third, and the first feeds into the second too. Um, if you want to streamline your process as well, Connor and I did this very very effectively, and we still do it now. Um, in fact, we're doing it even as we sit here and speak to you guys. You know, obviously, the reason for this podcast is not just so we can entertain ourselves or indeed entertain you. It is ultimately to drive business. Um, yeah. Although we are being completely natural now, I mean, there's no, there's no falsity here and it's not done to a script. We behave in this way. We deliberately don't act kind of wiggly fingers professional because that would attract the wrong kind of people. We want people who would be comfortable sitting in a bar talking like this to us, with us. Yeah. Because this is main, this is what we're like, yeah. Now that's a form of we, you can streamline your your sales process 
in that by qualifying. We are qualifying people. Anyone who listens to this and gets through the filter is qualified, more highly qualified. We explicitly have qualifying questions if we're doing interviewing people for our mentoring group. And it's pretty, you know, we do a triage process. We've spoken about it before. You know, we, we, know, we want to know if we're making enough money, they've got enough, they can afford it. We want to know if we've got a problem we can solve in, in this ethical business. And also, what you know, if we, do we actually want to help these people? Is this guy a complete boring fucktard? We don't want to touch with a barge pole <laughs> or a stolen dick, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and if you, you know, the more you qualify, no, well, the more you qualify, the, the better clients you get. And, and again, you, it's counterintuitive, but often if you're doing it properly and doing it naturally, you'll make your sales process is easier because people are then people will actually work hard to qualify for you. They want to please you. They're like dogs and fucking children. They want approval. And in, in that kind of situation, the approval you're giving them is, yeah, you can join us in our mentoring group or our, our business group, or you can become my client. I mean, it, it doesn't sound intuitive and it's not. And, but if you well, look at Dan Kennedy, I mean, when I did a day with Dan Kennedy, I'm not, I'm not going to disclose how much it cost, but it was five figures. It was not cheap <laughs> by any means. Yeah, five figures. And did, I had to go, it's all done by fax. So there's no there's no email or, or web page to finish. It's all done by fucking fax. And then you have to go to a fucking, to Cleveland, which is, yeah, it was three flights for me. Was it? Yeah, it was three flights for me. And, and then you stay in this, he picks up at this shitty hotel because it's close to his fucking house in a long station wagon that stinks of horse shit <laughs> and takes you to his house for about 10 minutes drive away. And then you sit for, an hour, for eight hours and you go back to the hotel and work your way home. Well, it, it, in no way, shape or form is that sophisticated, soft and fuzzy or uh, uh, an expensive, luxurious experience. But you still feel on top of the fucking world when you get the okay, yeah, you can come and do that for a day. Because yeah. you know that you know, not many people can. And it is an achievement in itself to, to qualify to give Dan five figures for a day's consulting. And of course, then there's what you get from it too. You know, that they paid for itself within about six weeks and it's paid for itself over and over again. And it's paying for itself even now because we've got the recordings of that day and we listen yeah. to them. And no, you can't you can't have them at all, anyone, no one, not for any price. So fuck off, don't ask. <clears throat> so people will work hard to qualify, but there's the catch. You've got to be genuine about it. I've seen people on LinkedIn and it, I, I don't know how I know, but you can tell that they're not congruent. Maybe it's the way they look and act. Maybe it's the way they post one thing and then post another. They will give mixed messages and it's like they'll say, oh, I don't work with just anyone. And I, I, I mean, I'm very strict about in my work with. Then the next breath, they may be complaining elsewhere about shitty clients. Those two yeah. things are incongruent. You know, yeah. if, if you are qualifying people, you won't get shitty clients. Because the moment they are shitty, they're gone. You won't, can't complain about them. Mm. They'll be gone. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. By moaning about shitty clients, it's implying you're putting up with them. Uh, yeah, exactly. Event somewhere. People yeah, but, like that. <laughs> you meet them in real life, John, and their breath fucking stinks. <laughs> honestly these people they don't have to brush their fucking teeth they, they, they're just fucking idiots thing is everyone who comes to your business is someone you've attracted everyone you work with is someone you've accepted the way they behave through all that time is something if you don't challenge it it's something you allow worse than that if you're allowing it and you still don't challenge it you're condoning it is it any wonder people get shitty clients and then and, and get treated like shit? Because they just put up with it and complain about it on LinkedIn, passive aggressive complaining, maybe hoping the client will see it and learn the error of his ways. Whereas we, we stamp on it straight away. We stamp on it before they've even started. We tell them, don't even try this fucking trick with us, mate, because you won't get anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is funny, and we talk about LinkedIn a lot, but that's fine. Um, when you, you can tell someone's recently read a book or has started following someone new because um i've seen exactly what you've just spoke about happen several times before with someone who i know is soft as shit they're fucking pathetic but they've definitely read a book that is uh, has spoke about polarization for example and it's like you can't work with me if and <laughs> obviously that's much better than you can work with me if usually 
you can't work me in there. big red X emojis. You are rude. Big X. It's like, for fuck's sake, you missed the point here, love. Fuck's sake. I know, I know. Sweet, isn't it? It's very sweet. Yeah, the thing and, is... And then, and then back to next week, they're posting pictures of their dog, and it's like, I love working from home. Fuck off. <laughs> just, just completely digressing for a second. There was one of those people on LinkedIn. I blocked her some time ago because um, she was just... Her, all of her posts were along the lines of it's okay to feel then a long list of fucking misery and despair. We all feel like that sometimes. And it, but it wasn't just one post. It was like every post. And it was almost like what well, she was trying so hard to convince people she was over her problems. And she clearly wasn't because she kept fucking going on about them all the time. But then the, the, for me, breaking the camel's back was she started offering and I'm not making, I promise, I swear I'm not making this up. <laughs> she was offering, I think they were 97 pounds. She did them for free at first. It was pre-COVID. So she did them for free anyway. And then she started charging 97 quid. Authenticity <laughs> audits of people's oh. LinkedIn posts. Oh, I remember this. I remember this. Yeah. You sent me a screenshot. That's right. And, <laughs> and yeah. my oh point my is God. this. If you need some, if you, if you convince yourself you need to have an authenticity, audit i'm going to save you 97 quid straight away if you think you need it checking you're not being authentic yeah that, that, I, because yeah. you know that you're not being authentic. i mean how stupid do you have to be to do but this how, how moronic do you have to be <laughs> to fucking pay a stranger to see if you're being authentic who knows nothing about you i know and if you need to and ask a question said, <laughs> what <laughs> It's like, just look at your own fucking posts. Do I believe yeah. that? Or was I being a lying little cunt? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like when people post the, the, these intense moral dilemmas, and my answer is always the same. If you have to ask the question, you know the answer. Because you're not looking for advice. You're looking for approval of what you want to do. And what you want to do is not what you should do. You know that. Yeah. Otherwise, Because it... otherwise you wouldn't be asking the question. Yeah. This is, is not right fucking if... difficult. Yeah. Is it right if I do X thing? Here's, here's the loopholes I yeah. want to use and abuse yeah, exactly. to, to do this. It's like, no, you're asking. Morally, you know it's wrong, but you're a greedy little bastard and you just want to abuse these loopholes to get your own way because yeah. you're a spoiler. You, you want to do, I know, you, look, you want approval. You want mm. these, you want... <laughs> You want some authentic cunt to come along and say, oh, yeah, well, everyone makes mistakes. So go ahead and make it and you can feel sorry for yourself afterwards. Oh, yeah. fucking Christians, right? Fucking Christians who get who get redemption. They can repent God. at any time up to death and they go to heaven. That's not a fucking religion. That's bullshit, man. <laughs> can you imagine it? <laughs> imagine. I mean, any God, right? Any God that would allow that. Any god that would allow that is a piece of fucking shit, if you ask me. Just everyone just gets a get out of jail free card. Yeah, <laughs> everyone yeah. just get as long as you repent just once before you die. It's fine. You're all and good. Then, now, how, how long? I mean, imagine you're in an airplane; it starts to crash. You got enough time to repent? Yeah, of course you have. Oh god, that's hilarious. I wonder if you can repent when you're at hell's gates in their mind. Like, I think I think you've got to be no, you have got to be alive still. So no, probably not. Oh, okay. So you can't repent at Hell's Gates while you're getting butt fucked. I would have thought so. No, I, I, I wouldn't know. But he, he, Satan has actually reserved a special place for me in Hell, I'll tell you. It's called his fucking throne. And when I get down there, he's going to fucking move over. EBG's in the house. Yes. Move over, <laughs> Satan. I'm here. I'd love I'm to. I'm fucking looking forward to it, mate. If I went to Hell, I, I, I want hooves, like horse hooves. And I want, I want just a line of people that I don't like to lick my hooves. I want to be fucking hung like a horse. <laughs> There's, oh, what's that film with Black Jack in it where it's all about Satan and uh, Satan's got a massive dick in it? Uh, I don't know, but now I'm filled with the urge to watch it. No, oh, it's fucking hilarious. Blackjack. It, it, oh, it's a great film. Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna watch that tonight. I'm going to get drunk and watch that tonight. God, you do not have an easy life, don't you? Anyway, so on your sales process. I'm 24, mate. Give me a break. Qualify hard. Qualify hard. <laughs> hard of course, like Satan's cock. 
Hard like Satan's cock. Hard like Satan's cock. Do you think they're allowed us to put that in the podcast description? Hard like Satan. Yeah, I reckon so. Maybe not cock. Maybe <laughs> just put a zero instead of the O. Get Todger. around it. Todger. Todger. Hard, hard like Satan's Todger. But no. I was going to say he's hard. manhood. Wouldn't be manhood, though. He's not a man. He'd be Satanhood, wouldn't it? Mm. Mm. And what's oh, the who? Is, is, is that like a specific? Is is that is that only reserved for uncircumcised people? What Satan's cock? No, <laughs> no. Same. <laughs> you, you know, it's manhood. Is the hood? In oh to no, the no, foreskin? no. All right, I don't think it refers to your foreskin because you've got womanhood as well. And I suppose that could be the clitoral hood. Exactly. But I don't think so. I don't know the etymology of the word, so I could be wrong, but I don't think so. so no. Anyway. I don't know the etymology of the word etymology, so I'm no use. Well, I don't know the etymology of etymology, but I know what it means. And it's nothing to do with insects either. <clears throat> so, last thing I want to talk about today is <laughs> an easy way to win more sales is start saying no. Start saying no more often and start saying no earlier. We've said this before. Go into every, every negotiation with no, not doing it, convince me, pretty much. Yeah. Now, there's a thing called takeaway selling, and I, I don't want to get into it in detail here because there's entire books I'm sure been written on it. Um, but one of the things you can do right up front at the beginning of a sales process or a sales call, if, if you're right, you know, if, it's, if this is the, 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 the bit where you're going to close the sale, what you can do is you can say, look, I'm pretty sure we can help, but it's important you understand. We are fully booked up and we don't we only take on so many projects a month or whatever. Um, so bearing in mind we're gonna have a discussion now, you need to be fairly sure in your own mind. Um th- th- it's almost certain you won't be able to work with us. I'm happy to speak to you and maybe point in the right direction of someone else who can help you, but you need to be sure that you need to understand that there's a very good chance I can't I won't be able to work with you. Right? That immediately positions you so powerfully now i realize it's not going to be appropriate for everyone it'd be a little bit difficult for a builder to do that but it would be to say well look you need to understand we're not going to do this before the spring or before the winter or before yeah. the summer whatever there's lessons in all these extremes yeah. so for all these idiots say oh i can't that won't work for me we'll take the lesson in it dickhead and it positions you as being very relaxed about it as being not needy um, and also as having integrity yeah Saying I'm going to help you, push you some, you know, maybe send you somewhere else, um, but I, I'm not probably not going to work with you myself, or there's a good chance I won't. Extremely powerful neediness, as any woman would tell you, a neediness is extremely unattractive. Stinks. It does. It does. Smell it a mile off. Smell it an absolute mile off. And that's about it, really. End, end of a fucking busy week for us, Connor. Yeah. Isn't there a book called Go For No? Possibly. The one I'm thinking of is by the late Jim Camp, which is Start With No. Start With No. What am I on about then? It's probably a remake of Jim Camp's Easy. I've heard of him. Yeah, he he sadly died. Um, Book. Go For No book. Oh, God, I'd never buy this book. I'd... I don't recommend it just off the fucking cover. Yeah, it looks like it. Richard Fenton. Fenton! And Andrea Walton. And go for no. Yes is the destination. No is how you get there. I'm not sure about that title. That subtitle even. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Read Jim Camp's book. He's a good guy. I'm not sure about these numbers. They've written a specific version for network marketing. Oh, no. Oh, fuck off. Yeah, that's now that I mean. is that is I tell you what, network marketing, multi-level marketing essentially, is is the the salad cream of the business world. Because yeah. you know salad cream is actually Satan's jizz, don't you? I like salad cream. There you go. Proof. <laughs> <laughs> Walk straight into that fucking head. You know. Salad cream is the most vile fucking substance. You can imagine. I can imagine. Really? Just, oh fuck off, Connor! It has no redeeming oh, features off. except, except the fact it's not in my house. 
It's nice. It fuck off, is it? It's like it's, it's fucking cheese. It's salad fucking cream. Yeah, but it's just very similar to mayonnaise, but with a little it's bit. Nothing of like spice. mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is lovely. Bit of space. I love mayonnaise, but salad cream's like mayonnaise with a little bit of this space. It's fucking. Wait. It's nothing like fucking mayonnaise. It's like mayonnaise in the same way that liquid soap is like mayonnaise. It well, looks very superficially texture. fucking similar. No, don't be silly. I'm not being silly. I'm being angry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you again. You haven't written down a one minute I hate it, but you could do one about MLM or salad cream, right? Oh, now. <laughs> oh no! I don't. I don't know if we could do a one minute hate about MLM. Could you not? No, because there's nothing specific about it. I hate. I just hate the whole thing. <laughs> so, you know, I hate the. Oh, okay, I tell you what. There's probably someone listening to this whose wife does <laughs> Avon or fucking that uh, cooking one and there's unique and there's a perfume one if your wife is doing any of those i guarantee you are footing her bills at the end of every fucking month and she is keep she keeps telling you i just need another 200 pound to invest in my company you've got a company why can't you invest in me cunt punt her as hard as you can and hope it knocks some sense into her honestly the, the, uh, oh god you, you, your wife is a victim and she is being preyed upon right now that might spur you into action but there is a parasite in her head and it needs sorting out because jesus christ these companies are the worst they are the you can learn market. a lot you can learn a lot from looking at them uh, the strategies they use the fundamentals they base everything upon is flawless flawless but they have no morals and they are scummy and they take these fundamentals and they they they, they manipulate it in the worst way possible scumbags oh, smart horrible. people but scummy yeah i mean some of well some like dan kennedy cut his teeth in amway mm -hmm. um amway, yeah. started in so, mlm too lots of people, do. people as well yeah lots but and lots that's of it that, that's that's the point they did they used to yeah yeah. If they were still doing it, they'd be poor. And they, they saw it. And a lot of good salesmen come from uh, that world because the fundamentals they teach are genuinely not bad whatsoever. But uh, it's, the, so. it's the application of it and then the targeting they go after. Um, I have done this several times when I've been bored at work and I need to kick up the ass to do something. Uh, you can Google any, any one of these um, MLMs um and then power hour put it into youtube and there's these team leaders their upline essentially they they record their zoom sessions they have with their their team as they call it and um yeah put it onto youtube if you watch it i guarantee uh, some of the clients listening to this if they followed the advice in it that actually makes them more fucking money because th these girls are more motivated know more about sales than them but oh my god is it sad and pathetic to watch Oof. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not a fan of that kind of thing, <laughs> to be honest. Oh, well, here's the thing about motivation, right? Motivation is dead easy. Motivating someone is really easy. This is why I have no no real time for motivational speakers. What's difficult yeah. is doing this shit. I mean, there's there's one guy in the UK, I've not heard of anything from him for years and years, or about him for years. But he would hold big events and he would sell them, and the events themselves would be expensive. And I think it either he would sell a product at the end of it. And on one of his websites, there were oh, there was a thousand and forty something testimonials, I believe. And I actually got Sarah to check all of them, just just flick through them, not not do anything, no facts. I was going to say, what did she do wrong? No, she just she just <laughs> she just read, just just flicked over, just just kind of scanned through them. Yeah, I was so I was looking for something specific. And out of that more than a thousand testimonials, all right, I'm not making this up, two mentioned a specific sum of money they'd made. And only one of those was over 100K. And this guy's a multimillionaire and he was selling the idea of becoming a millionaire. Every oh, single wow. testimonial, but two out of that more than a thousand was, we feel great about what we've just done. We, we think the future is going to be superb. We're really happy, motivated, excited, that kind of thing. Yeah. Two, mentioned us, uh, two mentioned a specific sum of money, and only one of them was over 100K. And it wasn't even a huge amount. It was like a quarter of a million. Oh, wow. That's pathetic. Uh, well, yeah. 
Um, it is. But of course, people are illogical and they will see those we feel great testimonials as being real testimonials, but they're not. Well, people see other people's happiness and they read their words and they automatically translate it and apply it to their own life, uh, their own life because happiness for one person is very different to the next person. So if someone puts on there, I'm finally happy, that the person reading that rationalizes it as, oh my God, my wife might say, stay with me. When they might just be happy, <laughs> might they're happy fucking, it? <laughs> they got a, <laughs> they got a free ticket and they're they're, they're they're a jobless nobody and they've finally just got a spark in their life for one. It's um yeah we're we're insanely irrational. Uh, my my girlfriend knows I str- hold strong opinions on these things that are, <clears throat> I'd say deeply rooted in common sense, and um, I have to say most 24, 25 female girls buy into the world of manifesting and affirmations oh, and all please, of that shit. No, and those um, words are forbidden yeah i know my girlfriend asked me my, my opinion on them and i went well what do you think and she said i think they're bullshit but you know you're I, i'm into my self-help and there's a paradox around self-help which is hilarious that i can yeah, tell you yeah, after yeah. anyway um and i said well they are bullshit and she was like but why are people happier when they're doing it and it's well they're just conflating um action with results that thing you say activity with achievement activity with achievement and you know just, just because they're looking bits. that's what it is just because they're looking at themselves in the mirror and saying i am pretty i am strong doesn't do fucking shit apart from make them think they are for five seconds i'm a, i mean i i can't speak for others but i've never seen the point in affirmations i've never but i've never needed them or i've never, I, never felt the need for them or um, i'm very skeptical and I have to wonder, because the kind of people who post about them, when they post about how they've helped them, they don't seem to be particularly fucking happy or secure in themselves, mm. even then. You know? Yeah. I, I, I've never, I've yet to meet anyone who will say, who would say, um, yeah, I did affirmations and it was really helpful. And I, I feel I'm really fucking sorted now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone who, who, who talks about them seems to be continually fucked up. Yeah. You know, and... Yeah. It's like looking at like that girlfriend of mine who died. I shouldn't laugh, should I? <laughs> that girlfriend of mine who died long, long after we split up, so I didn't get to chuckle at the time. Um, I remember once she was so fucked up about her weight. And one time she screamed and shouted at me, I know Weight Watchers works. I've been doing it for 10 years, so I know everything about it. And I said, if Weight Watchers is so fucking good and it works, with, and it works why have you been doing it for 10 years? Why are you still doing it? Why and still struggling with it. Yeah, she couldn't see the irony. You <laughs> know, I've been doing this for 10 years. It's not worked yet, but it's good because I know everything about it. Did she blame her thyroid? <laughs> oh, no, she was the diabetic one. And it's, she was completely oh, fucked up. Now, and she was so fucked up, it killed her in the end. Oh, bless. Oh, it was her own God. fault. I mean, she just didn't manage it properly at all. She lost her eyesight, then her organs started, and then she died. Um, wow, that's pretty fun. No this... The, uh, the closing remark I want to make on affirmations is if there's a particular part of your life that you're unhappy with, you're not going to fix it by telling yourself that you are the opposite of what you actually are. You, you're going to fix it by working on it daily. And if you tell yourself, you know, every morning I will work at being better with X today, I've, you know, well, then you're getting somewhere as long as you follow it up with, you know, sort of read a book, apply it in real life stand up for yourself for once whatever it may be but by simply looking in the mirror and telling yourself it especially because these cunts they put it into youtube and they listen to other people's shit and it's like well that makes no sense yeah anyway what was you going to say i was going to say what if, what if you're making an affirmation about something which is simply not true like say you are overweight and you're not happy with being overweight and you know it's injurious to your health how does standing in front of a mirror saying I am beautiful. I feel happy yeah. in my body, and I'm con- yeah. I'm confident and and satisfied with my weight. If you're not, mm-hmm. how does saying you are make you? Oh, I, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's going to make you unhappier because the, I, I that. tell you that that's, that 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 actually happens. That actually happens. That exact use case. There, you know. Let's not beat around the bush. There's some fucking ugly women out there in the world. Yeah. And... <laughs> well, there is, isn't there? There, there is. I'm, not not, not I'm, I'm letting you run with this one, mate. I'm not saying a word. Well, we're not in a perfect world, are we? There's a reason the word ugly and pretty exists because there's fucking use cases for them. And not every woman in the world is pretty. Not every woman in the world is skinny. 
So by telling yourself every <laughs> single day when you're a fat, ugly cunt that I am pretty and I am skinny, eventually you're going to realise you're lying to yourself and you're just going to break down even further and get even fatter and you'll get red puffy eyes and you'll look even uglier. It's stupid. Just tell yourself, I'll, I'll wear more makeup. I'll, I'll go for a walk today. I, I won't eat that crispy creme. Have you seen that photograph of the really fat woman in the bikini and she's covered in post-it notes, notes saying beautiful, 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 beautiful. Oh, and then alongside it, there's another one of a dog with all the post-it notes on it saying cat, 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 <laughs> cat, 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 cat. It's fucking hilarious. Uh, I love my meme. beauty's in the eye of, or eye of the beholder, but you know, you can't argue fat. <laughs> you can't argue fat. And you don't get well, skinny is, by telling yourself you're not fat. I used to, I used to know a lady, she was, uh, she was actually a bouncer. And she was about, well, she was short for me. To me, she was about five foot two. You know, this black woman, um, I can't remember her name now, Shirley, I think it was. And she was quite large. But there was something about her that made her incredibly sexy. So, I mean, being fat itself is not necessarily, because she had a great personality, is not necessarily a cause for, for being repulsive. No, no, of It's just that a lot of repulsive people are, are coincidentally fat. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and some people are repulsive because they're fat. But it's not a universal. Some people love people because they're fat. They're, yeah, they're, some, the some guys thing. like fat birds, don't they? Well, BBWs. What? Big, oh, big black women. No, big, 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 oh, right. Oh, where are the big, big black women? women? I think BBC's on the big black cocks. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason <laughs> my uh i'll tell you what i don't want to give away too many details here but i know someone who knows someone um who attends parties and the oh, only yeah. two types of people that are allowed to go are overweight women with a certain bmi and black men and it's labeled as a uh, like a uh, cream cream and logs or something so like logs being cocks and cream being yeah 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 i did get that <laughs> i have to explain it to the others um and it's desire yeah it's hidden as a party but it's just a fuck fest an absolute fuck fest why don't we ever get invited to fucking parties like that man because believe it or not john despite all of our downfalls we're still relatively normal <laughs> there's some really fucked up people out there I suppose. Yeah, no, back to the manure <laughs> fetish, aren't we? What, what would the, <laughs> what, what, what would be, what, what specific party would you go to? No eye contact and fucking giants. So short autistic men and giraffe-like <laughs> women. I don't know. <laughs> do, do I actually get to choose? So is, is there like a, a catalogue of parties I can be invited to? <laughs> Uh, there's something for everyone, isn't there? Anyway, let's wrap this shit up if you want to do a one minute hate. Yeah, we'll start again next week with one minute hate. So I forgot all about it actually. And that you uh, can't. It's not good enough, mate. People love the one minute hate. Hey, well, people, if people fucking joined our groups and paid us more, well, we'd be more fucking motivated to do it. <laughs> and this thing, watchers. <laughs> Seriously, if you're listening to this podcast and you're not paying us money and you've listened to all of them, this is the 34th fucking episode. Yeah, that's 17, well, it's nearly fucking 34 hours, I guess, because most of them yeah. are fairly long. You're probably looking at at least 30 hours of free content, you fucking freeloading cunts. <laughs> Pay us! <laughs> well, to be fair, I, I'm not sure I want them anyway, if they've listened for 30 hours and haven't, you know, felt like... That is a really good point. That is a valid I'd... point. If you could listen to this for 30 hours and not think, shit, these guys know something, I need mm. to fix my business, you're a pretty, you're a fucking loser. Fuck off. We don't want yes. to stop listening. Let me let me get some, you know, actual stats of listeners who matter rather yeah. than listeners who don't. Because we, 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 we don't <laughs> rely on listeners to pay our bills. So therefore, I do not give a fuck how many we have. I'm not we, we are not one of these corporate entities that relies on listeners in order to sell ad space for a higher price. If you are never, ever even going to think about buying from us. I don't want you. And if you are thinking about buying from us, I might not even want you then. Some guy asked me if I wanted to put a podcast, he would host it and do all the editing for us in return for us putting ads in our podcast. And I said, we never want to do advertising in our podcast. What? Well, you can make some money, he said. I said, I don't care. I don't want to put fucking ads in my podcast, you moron. What and we'd have? I assume we'd have no control over what type of ads are being run, so we could be slagging off fucking 
um, manifesting and whatnot, and then some chakra <laughs> tweaker could be selling crystals. Well, I think, you, I mean, don't get me wrong, running ads through your podcast is a legitimate way of making money. People do it. I mean, a serious it's, amount of money. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's fine, but that, that's not our business. No. Nope. And it would detract from our business. So, you know, that's a really good example of what I was saying before about having focus. Yeah. Yeah. You know, don't grab at every fucking opportunity because it makes some money. Um, I actually had an email the other day from a guy who uh, I know him from years back, and he, he offered me an opportunity of, of contributing something to a like a group product. We would all sell it to our individual lists, and we'd all get a kickback on it, something like that. And I just said, oh, it's not my business. It's not what I do anymore. I said, if you want to license my email supremacy product, fine. Um, and I'll just take money for it, but I'm not promoting it to my list because yeah. if I started selling copywriting products to my my uh, tr- list of trades people, they think there's something completely fucking gone wrong in my life. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it just wouldn't be appropriate, but he couldn't see that, you know? That's that's the sort of idea you have in university when you read your first internet marketing book. Anyway, I really need a wee, so I'm going to go for a wee whilst you wrap this up. I'll still be All right. listening. All right. He's still listening, but he can't reply. So <laughs> if you want to make more money with less work, less hassle, and fewer headaches. Don't listen to a word Connor says because he's talking fucking shit all the time. Instead, listen to me, the guy with the fucking fashion sense. No, if you want to make more money, less work, less hassle, and fewer headaches, and work with better clients, charge higher rates, and have them all fed into your business through a pipeline which itself is filled turgid and moistly in, in the background, off hands or hands off and, and, and on autopilot, go to ottcollective.co.uk and get all that shit. Not what I've got to say already. And while Connor's here, I'm going to share something with you. See this? This is my hammer. And you see this? This is actually a pickaxe handle. And the reason I have these by my desk is for self-defense. Because you never know what's coming around the corner, do you? I like Connor's talking about you. Yeah, fucking hurt. Anyway, I've I've done it. So all that remains to say is... Fuck off. Stay, stay safe, stay inside, wash your hands. Don't come in my fucking hammer. And please do not shit on your fingers. See you later, ta-da.